Hi, my name is Aaron Ross, and I'm here to help you learn the basics of 3DS Max. I'm a professional educator and writer with 10 years of experience. Now I'm creating a series of video tutorials to help you get started producing your own games, films, and design visualizations. One of the great strengths of 3DS Max is that it can be used by individuals and small groups to produce quality results in a short amount of time. After watching this free series of four videos, you'll be able to do all of this. Our first project is a simple one, an ice cream cone. Take a look at this time-lapse video from part four. I'm using an FFD modifier to change the shape of the ice cream. So let's get started in the 3DS Max interface. When you first open 3DS Max, with the default interface and preferences, you'll be confronted with a lot of stuff in the viewports here that we don't really need. This is called a steering wheel, and this is called the view cube. These are both designed for non-technical users such as directors and managers so that they can evaluate a 3DS Max scene without necessarily knowing the tools. For the purposes of a professional user of 3DS Max, the view cube and steering wheel actually get in our way. Also, for the purposes of teaching, it's better to have a cleaner interface without too much clutter. So let's turn both of these features off before we really begin. First thing I'm going to do is go up to my Views menu in my main menu at the top of the 3DS Max window. Within that Views menu, you'll see View Cube and Steering Wheels. So for the View Cube, to disable it, I'm going to have to go into the Configuration, View Cube Configure. It takes me to the Viewport Configuration dialog, and I can simply flip the switch to Disable the View Cube, and click OK. Then I can go back to my Views menu, and additionally turn off the Steering Wheels. I can go to Steering Wheels, Toggle Steering Wheels, which means if they're on, turn them off. Now we've got a cleaner interface in our viewports, and we won't be distracted by all of that. The other thing I want to turn off is this Info Center toolbar. This is a nice feature that allows you to search not just the 3DS Max help documents, but also the online knowledge base at Autodesk.com. 3DS Max is divided into several main areas. In the center, of course, we have the viewports, and this is where we will view and manipulate our virtual world or our 3D scene. We have a main menu across the top. We also have a strip of icons here called the main toolbar. And a lot of our common tools are found there. On the right hand side we have the so-called command panel. And this is where you'll spend quite a lot of time in 3ds Max. You have different tabs within the command panel. For example, the create panel and the modify panel. Those are the two that you'll use most. In the Create panel, we have a bunch of categories of objects. For example, Geometry, that'll make 3D objects. Or Shapes, that'll create 2D lines. Lights and cameras and so on. We'll start by making simple primitives. So the first category in this pull-down list here is Standard Primitives. A primitive is a basic building block object, like a sphere or a box. To start making primitives, you can click on one of the buttons, such as Sphere click and drag in one of the viewports, and we'll use the perspective viewport to do that. So I click to determine the center of the sphere, drag to determine the radius, and then release the mouse. The funny thing about these buttons is, if you click it again, it doesn't turn the button off. If you want to stop making spheres, you can choose a different tool. For example, you can go up to your main toolbar and click on the Select Object tool. That'll exit you out of sphere creation mode. And you can go to selecting objects. If an object is selected, it'll be bracketed, or in a wireframe view, it'll be shown in white. To delete objects, just select it. You can control click to select multiple objects and hit the delete key on the keyboard. Okay, so if you want to make boxes and other types of objects, you may need to click and drag multiple times. For example, with a box, you'll click and hold the mouse to determine the length and width of the box. Release the mouse button and drag upward to determine the height. And click again 
to finish the operation. So again, I'll hit delete, make a new box, click and drag to make the footprint of the box or the length and width, release the mouse, drag up, click again. If I want to stop making boxes, I'll right click. That's another way to exit out of a creation mode. You can choose a different tool or you can just use the right mouse button and click anywhere in the viewport. So I'll delete that box and I'll make a cone. Click and drag to determine the first radius, release, drag up to determine the height. Click again to set the second radius and click yet again to complete the operation. To exit the tool, right click in the viewport. So that's how you can create objects in 3ds Max. Let's look at moving these objects. We can move them within our scene using our so-called transform tools. The word transform is one that you'll see a lot in computer graphics. It basically means position, rotation, and scale. So in 3ds Max, on our main toolbar, we have three transform tools next to each other. Select and move, select and rotate, and select and uniform scale. So if I want to move an object, I'll click on the select and move tool. So now I can select an object and I can drag on any one of these three arrows to move it in one of the three directions of three dimensional space. We've got the X axis, the Y axis, and the Z axis. To undo, if you want to restore something back to its initial position, you can just hold down the control key and press the Z key, control Z to undo. I've also got my rotate tool, select and rotate, and it works similarly. I can click on one of these circles here to rotate the object in different directions. I can also click in the center to have a sort of trackball-like rotation. The third transform is scale. Most of the time you're better off not using the scale tool because there are simpler and better ways of making things large or small. For example, for a box I can click and drag to determine its length and width directly. I can right click to exit box creation and then simply go to my modify panel. In that modify panel Parameters for the selected object are displayed. So my box is displayed and I have length, width, and height values here that I can type in directly. So if I want it to be a certain size, it's a simple matter for me to type in some values. Make it smaller perhaps, 50, hit the tab key, type in, hit the tab key, and hit return. Contrast that with scaling the object, which is much more inaccurate and could actually get you into trouble later down the line when you start building hierarchies of connected objects. So in general, you're better off not using the scale tool if you can get away with it. For primitives, it's a no-brainer because all the primitives have size parameters that can be directly edited. Now you may be wondering, what do these numbers represent? That's a separate consideration that we'll look at later. Right now, 3ds Max is just using so-called generic units that don't have any relationship to any kind of measurement in the real world. So I can continue creating objects, such as a sphere, or even a teapot, the official mascot of the 3D graphics industry. And with any object selected, I can go to its modify panel and play around with its parameters. Like for example, the radius of my teapot, or whether the teapot has a lid or not. Again, I can hit delete. I can select an object and move it. I can rotate. And I can have fun setting up a simple scene with just a few primitives.